The days of protein powder being simple are over. There are so many ingredients in different protein powders and Walmart has a pretty epic selection of protein powders. So we're gonna head in there, we're gonna break down which ones are worth getting and which ones are worth possibly just completely throwing to the side. Then we're also gonna break down some of the pre-workouts. We're gonna break down some of the post-workouts, some of the amino acids, some of the electrolytes. So you're gonna have an idea of what is good surrounding the entirety of workout performance and post-workout nutrition here at Walmart. Let's go ahead and break down some protein powders. All right, go to the pharmacy, sports supplements, vitamins, everything is always in the pharmacy. It's cool, they used to not have a lot of stuff. Walmart used to be a little bit kind of weird with what you would define in the way of sports supplements, in the way of vitamins, all that stuff. Over the last, I'd say, 18 months, two years, it's really just really turned the tide. Like it's been a completely different ball game with what they have available now. All right, so let's go take a look at what we have here in the way of protein powders first. They have a good selection here. It's minimal, but the ones that they do have are pretty good. So the first thing that comes to eye is I want to take a look at Let's see, grass-fed whey, because that catches my eye, because I'm always into grass-fed, right? That's going to usually be a good thing. This is from Muscle Tech, and eh, I don't know. But there we go. First thing we have listed, whey protein concentrate. When you want whey protein, you want whey protein isolate, okay? It means that the whey protein is isolated away from all the rest of the dairy, all the other milk ingredients. Whey protein concentrate, although it can have a delicious flavor, it is not the isolated protein. So you end up with a lot of other garbage. Look at how many carbs are in this. Okay, nine grams of carbs, but also maltodextrin. Okay, natural flavors, which we don't want. Uh, guar gum, not a huge deal. Sunflower lecithin is not a huge deal either. It's usually just to kind of keep it from clumping and stuff. So you're gonna see that a lot. Okay, so this one does not make the cut. So even though it's grass fed, it's not isolated. So we gotta be careful there. Okay, uh, and then we have Body Fortress. Let's see, this is going to be a super advanced isolate protein, which is much better because it's isolate. Triphase isolate matrix. Okay, so we have milk protein isolate, or whey protein isolate, milk protein isolate, and then soy protein isolate? Why? Okay, so clearly you put soy protein in something because it adds more bulk in the way of protein. This was on an okay track, but then the other thing that I do have in there is we have not only sucralose, but we have acesulfame potassium, which is acesulfame potassium is one of the worst sweeteners you could have. So when you're looking at protein powders, you really should be careful of acesulfame potassium because it spikes your insulin aggressively through what is called a cephalic insulin response. That means it's so sweet, it activates your pancreas to produce insulin. You don't necessarily want that, especially when you're doing a super low carb protocol. Um, I wanna jump over here really quick. Muscle milk is a different kind of protein. So muscle milk is not something you would have post-workout. It's a slow digesting protein that's mainly like a caseinate blend. But take a look, whoa, look at the ingredients there. Whey protein concentrate, milk protein isolate. Then we got isomalto oligosaccharides, soluble vegetable powder, which sounds really bad, but it's actually not that bad. All that isomalto oligosaccharides are, are going to be like indigestible uh, fibers. So it sounds terrible, but it's actually quite good for you. It just doesn't necessarily work in line with a protein powder. Then we have non-dairy creamer, <laughs> sunflower oil, so super omega-6 profile there, calcium caseinate, sodium caseinate, mono and diglycerides, maltodextrin, sodium caseinate, canola oil. Okay, this is, no. I mean, it's, a col it's basically a meal replacement, but you're better off to take a whey protein isolate and add a scoop of coconut oil into it to make it a meal replacement rather than that. So that sketches me out a little bit. Um, Let's jump over to this one, okay? I've talked about Isopure on my channel before, and I don't wanna make this sound super contrived. I mean, yes, they are a supporter on this channel, and they are a sponsor, so I'm careful not to sound contrived with that, but I also have to be realistic when I say this is going to be the best option that you're going to have at Walmart, because look, two ingredients, whey protein isolate and soy lecithin, which they're using as just, again, so it doesn't clump. And the soy lecithin, you're not getting Sure, could you use something a little bit better? You probably could, like maybe sunflower lecithin, but you're splitting hairs because the lecithin doesn't contain the oils. Okay, look, zero grams of fat. So you're not getting any of the omega-6s you would get from soy. So whey protein isolate, zero grams of carbs, zero sugar, zero fat. I mean, it is nothing but pure whey protein isolate. And 20 bucks at Walmart. Okay, so 25 grams of protein per serving. 
hands down, I mean, without fail, this is the best find at Walmart. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link down below so you can use a store locator. And a big thank you to Isopure for also supporting this channel in various videos. Super awesome. So I'll put a link down below, but you can obviously find them at Walmart. Um, they have a creamy vanilla one. This is one, if you're interested in one that has a little bit more like extra stuff, this has got a whey protein isolate, plus it's got a vitamin and mineral blend. So instead of just the pure protein, like this IsoPure pure one is really good for like baking and things like that, and also just unflavored. This one does have sucralose in it. Um, so it does have a couple of things in there to give it more flavor and stuff. So if you're looking for something that's more of a creamy sweet one, you're not as concerned about other things that are in it, still in the grand scheme of things, gonna be the cleaner protein here by all means but this is the one that I lean into because it is so awesome. Okay, no dyes, nothing, just amazing stuff. Um, now let's jump over into, well, let's take a look at this. So we've got Dymatize's ISO 100, which could be considered like a competitor, but we have some issues there, okay? We have hydrolyzed whey protein isolate, whey protein isolate, natural and artificial flavors. Okay, edible glitter, all these different food colorings, plus sucralose, Okay, that clearly doesn't make the cut. Let's go pea protein for a second because there's some good plant-based proteins here. So whey protein, just so you have an idea, just so you kind of know the context here, whey protein is going to absorb very, very fast. Okay, I usually have a pea protein unless I am looking for a very quick absorption, post-workout, anything like that, in which case I'll use a whey isolate. Pea protein, for me, I like as like a meal replacement. So I use them both. This one, let's see, Vega, pea protein, cocoa powder, pea starch, natural flavor, spinach. Okay, a lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, actually pretty clean, candidly. Pea protein, pea starch. So it does have some pea starches in there which elevate the carb content a little bit. Um, but I don't see any broccoli powder. I see sacha inchi protein. That's a nice protein, but this is actually a good plant-based blend. If you're looking for a plant-based one, that Vega one's not bad. I'm not gonna spare the details on the vanilla because it's probably the same. This one, if you're getting a collagen protein, that's what I love about this, vital proteins. Now it's pricey, $42.98, okay, but we have one ingredient. <laughs> I mean, you, it's literally, that's it, collagen peptides. A 20 gram scoop, or two scoops, 20 grams of collagen peptides. Okay, this is vital proteins. Very, very good value when it comes down to it. But remember that collagen protein is not a complete protein, okay? So you're not using that in place of protein. You're using it in adjunct to, in addition to, to get more, you know, hair, skin, nail, stuff like that. Uh, there's also a lot of gut benefit and stuff there. Okay, then we have Orgain, organic protein. Let's see, this is a plant-based one here. Uh, pea protein, brown rice protein, chia seed, creamer base, Acacia, hyaluric sunflower oil, rice dextrin, uh, rosemary, erythritol. Uh, okay, so we're kind of getting into this. Okay, no sucralose, I appreciate that. Uh, but there is erythritol in there, which in a protein powder might give you a little bit of gastric upset. So if it was between these two for the protein powders, I would go with the Vega over the Orgain. It just would be a little bit better there. Okay, then we have collagen peptides, excuse me, from Purely Inspired versus the vital protein. So this one's cheaper, 1997. And what do we have here? Hydrogen, collagen, peptides, and silicon dioxide. That's it, so pretty, pretty good. You know, silicon dioxide, like silica, is something that is perfectly fine. Okay, so silicon dioxide, you could say that's super artificial. But you know, I think vital proteins is pure, but if you're on a super budget, this is half the price or less than half the price. So, I mean, there is a point to this. So if you're really trying to like go for value here, this one makes sense. Okay, I would definitely say that. Uh, then we have this organic protein. Let's see what this one is. Purely inspired, again, organic protein. This one is, whoa, pea protein, brown rice protein, coconut creamer, rice syrup solids. So when I'm looking at protein powders, um, brown rice protein is a relatively low quality protein in my opinion. I usually want to see like pea protein combined with hemp uh, just because it's going to, when you get pea protein, you typically want hemp protein along with it because pea protein lacks what is called methionine. It's one of the sulfur aminos and those sulfur aminos are important for muscle building and for repair. So when you combine pea protein with rice protein, you're not necessarily getting that, okay? There's a loud radio behind me, so I'm sorry about that. This is reality point is, is that that sulfur protein or that sulfur amino, methionine, you're going to get out of hemp. So just be wary of that. So we've knocked out the proteins. Um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of these other sports supplements that are here. 
In this case, we have 100% creatine. This is great. Like right here, it's five grams of creatine, pure creatine, nothing else in there. Creatine is not a bad supplement. Creatine, I think, is great whether you are doing keto, whether you are fasting, whether you are doing anything. It's just a phenomenal supplement and you don't need to be taking it in a full five gram amount. Okay, a nootropic dose would be like two, two and a half grams, so a half a scoop of this. And this value, let's see, six star, it's just protein, I mean, excuse me, just creatine, unflavored, and it's only 9.97. Okay, so very inexpensive one of the best bang for the buck supplements that you can get in terms of just performance. Um, okay, people ask a lot about hydroxycut. Let's take a look at what's in some of these fat loss supplements here. Okay, we have caffeine, 270 milligrams of caffeine. We have theanine, cayenne pepper. Then we have green coffee extract and yohimbi, which is different from yohimbine. Uh, yohimbi extract is going to get you a small amount of yohimbine. If you wanted pure yohimbine, you would want to get what is called yohimbine HCL. Yohimbine HCL. Yohimbi is going to supply a negligible amount of yohimbi. Uh, yohimbine, excuse me. Yohimbi is going to supply a negligible amount of yohimbine. Then it's got tyrosine, methionine, leucine, and transferic acid. So basically like a muscle preservation blend. A long story short, this does not have anything valuable in it. It is basically just... It's basically just caffeine. Like you might as well just have a cup of green tea and a caffeine pill for a fraction of the dollars, right? So hydroxy has been around for a long time. Nugenics, uh, this is a tea booster. Wow. They charge $40 for vitamin B6 for zinc. I un and only one milligram of zinc too. You need like 50 milligrams of zinc to be able to actually have the benefit. But then we have uh, citrulline malate, which is just improving blood flow. So for guys, you know what I'm getting at with that, right? That's why they got it. Fenugreek and tribulus are powerful at testosterone boosting, but if you're going to get tribulus and fenugreek, just get them on Amazon for like $3. This seems very pricey. Um, this other fat burner here, very similar ingredients to hydroxycut for $10 less. So here's the deal. I don't wanna spend a lot of time with fat burners because although fat burners have some merit, I just don't think that they're really going to solve the problem for you. So let's just kind of forget that. I don't think it's a huge deal. Let's jump into some aminos for a second. BPI Sports has BCAAs. All right, I see a lot of BCAAs, branched chain amino acids here, but I don't see the ones that I think are the most important, which are called essential amino acids. Branched chain amino acids, you're only getting the benefit of leucine. Okay, and leucine is very muscle sparing, but essential amino acids are going to be all the amino acids that are essential for muscle rebuilding and tissue repair. Branched chain amino acids, you get leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And isoleucine and valine are two amino acids that don't do a whole lot for you. I am surprised that we still have a lot of BCAAs on the market, when in reality, EAAs are the ones that are going to be better. So I would say any of these BCAAs just don't bother. They're not going to save your muscle and they're not going to preserve you. It's not worth it. Go and get yourself some EAAs. It's just going to be better. But here we have one that is essential aminos plus electrolytes. See, essential amino. Instead of branched chain amino acid, look at this. Look at the amino acid blend here. Okay, that's what the label looks like, okay? We have all the aminos that we need that are essential. Plus, it has a nice electrolyte blend. Okay, granted, I'm sure there is some, let's see what's in there. There is sucralose in there. Okay, so I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about the sucralose in there. I would much rather you just get straight up essential amino acids, possibly online, but it, I would still take this over this, right? Any of these are gonna have sucralose too. Essential amino acids, not branched chain amino acids. If you have a scoop of this along with protein, it can potentially 4X the bioavailability of your protein after a workout. There are studies that demonstrate that because you get a bigger mTOR spike. You get a bigger mTOR elevation, which makes it so that more muscle protein synthesis occurs. Um, more branched chain aminos. Uh, we're getting into electrolytes here, which I don't think really are gonna play too much into sports supplements a whole lot. Let's see, we got citric acid, stevia. Okay, so this one's stevia, and it looks like we have, hmm. Oh, it has aminos in it too. Interesting. So it has branched chain aminos plus 140 milligrams of sodium. So really not much sodium in there. 140 milligrams? That doesn't make a lot of sense. What's this BioSteel sugar-free? Oh, it's just a different flavor. Same thing, just different flavor. Hmm. Okay, what about some of these ready-to-drink proteins? I think this is something we need to pay attention to as well. 
Premier pro pure protein, premier protein get asked about a lot. Let's take a look on that. Whoa. Okay, so the water protein blend mil is milk protein isolate, calcium caseinate, whey protein concentrate. Then we get into maltodextrin, natural artificial flavors. Uh, yeah, not exactly good. There's a lot of acesulfate and potassium, a lot of stuff in there. The ready to drink ones are a little bit sketchy. With ready to drink protein drinks, you typically want to go for ready to drink uh, ones that are in the refrigerated section so that they don't have the sodium benzoates and the preservatives and all that. We've already covered muscle milk in a powder form, but if we cover muscle milk in this form, we see it's even worse because now we get into additional preservatives like carrageenan as a stabilizer, more sucralose, more acesulfate and potassium. Uh, you can see it just comes quite an issue. Okay, so we want to be careful there. I would not recommend that. Uh, Body Fortress, what's in this? High protein. Let's hope that it's at least just whey protein. Milk protein isolate, calcium case, it's basically a knockoff of the pure protein. I can already tell you right there. Almost the exact same ingredients. Um, so far, we're... <laughs> oh God, 12 grams, yeah, 10 grams of sugar added to the Gatorade one. Let's just not even go there. We go to Premier Protein, another big brand. Uh, I, think we, I think they sell these at Costco. Yeah, water, milk protein concentrate, not even whey protein at all in there. It's purely made with milk protein. This is no different than like a boost, like, you know, calorie shake. So no different than like a boost, like sort of like calorie drink that you would drink just to get calories. Like I would not recommend that. Uh, I think all the premier proteins are going to fall in the same category. The equates are just going to be knockoffs of that. So but we do need to check out the quest, uh, which I'm hopeful, cautiously optimistic here because Quest does, okay, I will give Quest this. The ingredient list is much less, much smaller. So we have water, milk protein concentrate, but still no actual like whey protein. Milk protein does not give you the same like muscle protein synthesis effect, right? So here we have sucralose. It's still not good, but it's the best out of all of them. Okay, we're gonna go through uh, the pre-workouts here, but we're gonna blaze pretty quick. The main thing you wanna look for, okay, obviously you're gonna have caffeine in it. Typically beta alanine, citrulline malate, uh, those are the things you're gonna really look for. Let's start with these bang ones because I do like the fact that they already have, I saw something in there. I saw, where did I see it? I saw that they had, a, yeah, seven and a half grams of essential amino acids. I like that they have EAAs. The bottom line is that pre-workout though, you don't wanna have a bunch of amino acids. I know it sounds counterproductive, but pre-workout, if you have amino acids, you're actually blunting some of the potential fat loss effect uh, because you do get a little bit of an insulin spike. I prefer working out fasted. So if you're working out fasted, I wouldn't bother doing this. I would just have caffeine or coffee, really, okay? But if you're not working out fasted and you are gonna have a pre-workout, then I'd be okay with this. The problem is, I'm pretty sure we end up with a bunch of aspartame and stuff in here. Let's see, sucralose, okay. So what I wanna to try to find is, can we find a pre-workout that is completely Thomas approved that doesn't have sucralose? So I'm gonna blaze through this really quick here. Um, muscle pump. So this could be cool. I just, I bet you there's, yeah, sucralose as well as some colorings and, and acetylene and potassium. So sweeteners, look at the bottom line is, here's the deal. If you're trying to avoid sweeteners altogether, you are best off just making your own pre-workout. You really are. Like, add some citrulline malate, have some caffeine, have a little green tea extract, whatever. If you're not worried about that, I'm not gonna fault you for it. Then we need to look at the other things. So let's put sucralose and stuff aside. So far, this one looks really cool uh, just because of that hooperzine in there. What's in this muscle tech one? Okay, still sucralose. Ooh, interesting. Hawthorne, nitrous, arginine, and acetyl. Uh, caffeine, it's got a little bit of creatine. Nah, this one's not that good. Um, six star, what do we have in six star? Advanced amino complex. Okay, so basically this is kind of funny because all this is is caffeine and amino acids. They're calling it a pre-workout. Um, enhanced focus, what do we have in here? Beetroot, I do like beetroot in there. And acetylcysteine as an antioxidant sort of uh, effect. Uh, phosphatidylcholine, theobromine, Himalayan pink salt, Yohimbi bark. This one's kind of cool. Uh, bang for the buck, it's not bad. Again, BPI did a good job on that one. Again, artificial sweeteners, you're gonna have a bunch of them. Um, okay, this Jekyll and Hyde brand, I've seen it before. Beta alanine, creatine, um, performance, cognitive drive. Ooh, I do like it has choline in it. Okay, so this one would be good and adaptogenic. This is cool. 
Okay, again, artificial sweeteners, we gotta put that aside. This has a good, like, sort of focus blend with the adaptogenic matrix to help you adapt. The whole idea behind, like, ashwagandha and uh, aframome and everything like that, it's all about f allowing your body to get better at adapting to stress. So I like that they're using that. So this one, so far, these two seem like the most interesting that are here. Uh, C4 is just basic stuff. There's nothing really fascinating about C4 um, other than it's just, it just kind of cracks you out. Like it just is a bunch of energy and you got some conjugated linoleic acid in there. Yeah, there's nothing fascinating there. Uh, C4 Sport, we kind of get into the same thing. What about this Redcon 1? We have beta alanine, caffeine, juniper, dicaffeine, malate. That's interesting. At least they're using a different uh, form. Interesting. So this is, okay, this is not like a pump supplement. This is just flat out energy. Um, also sucralose. So again, we run into that problem. So I did not find any that do not have artificial sweeteners. That's the issue that we face here. So we run into that big problem. So again, the evolution, the Jekyll are probably the most interesting. Uh, and then this one is a close second. This Fast and Furious one is kind of interesting. And that, can't really see anything else that's worth mentioning. The Bang is going to be good, except for the fact that you wouldn't really wanna have it pre-workout if you're fasting. If you're not fasting and you work out with food, then that one would be okay too. I saw another protein, here's another protein, that's interesting. Gold standard whey. This wasn't anywhere else. Um, also whey protein isolate, then mixed with whey protein concentrate. Yeah, sucralose. I mean, again, sucralose, take it or leave it, whatever, but I don't like that it has the whey protein concentrate mixed in there and the whey peptides, natural artificial flavor. I mean, again, you compare that to like, you know, these two ingredients, it's a no brainer, right? And then, oh, there's one more thing that's sneaking here that I want to check out. Here's two, actually. Okay, so we've got casein protein. Uh, should you have casein protein pre-bed? Look, the bottom line is you're not going to get that much of an effect, okay? Uh, we also have acesulfame, potassium, and sucralose. This is six-star brand. The thing with casein, you have to know this. Like, before bed, first of all, you should be cutting your food off by like 7 p.m. for the best results in terms of fat loss, okay? The quicker that you end up in a fasted state, A, the better you will sleep, B, the more fasted your workout will be in the morning because you stopped food earlier. Casein protein, the whole idea is it breaks down slow. It gelatinizes in your gut. And what that means is it, it kins into like a gel and it digests very slow. So as far as your body is concerned, you're still kind of digesting food for like three, four, five hours after you go to bed, which A, is not good for your sleep, not good for your diurnal rhythms, but B, it also means that you're not getting the optimal fat loss overnight because your body is still in a fed state. You wanna get your body into that fasted state so that you upregulate AMPK and start utilizing stored tissue. So I'm not the biggest fan of casein. I think that casein could have a purpose if you were gonna have it say with like lunch and you needed to like go a long period of time before dinner or something. So it's not all bad. I just don't, it's marketed as pre-bed. But then I saw this one, it's hiding in there. It's like Eric Cartman with a beefcake episode. 100% mass gainer. What do we have in here? So this is a crud load of carbs. We have 200, <laughs> no way. Six scoops. A serving size, this is just comical. A serving size is six scoops. <laughs> 280 grams of carbs. 44 grams of protein. What is in this? It's just a bunch of like starches. That's comical. I think the <laughs> mask <gainer. laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow.